Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the next episode in my troubleshooting series. This time we're looking at Jupiter and we're going to take a look at my top five tips on how to bring more Jupiterian energy into your life. How to enjoy this wonderful energy more. And Jupiter is a very wonderful energy. I love people who've got a strong Jupiter. You know, they're full of fun. They're exciting people. They, they dream big, okay? That's one of the great things about a great Jupiterian. So how do you know if your Jupiter is too strong or too weak? Now there's lots of things I look at when I'm looking in a chart. You know, I'm looking at Definitely your Rahu Ketu axis. So if Rahu is in, you know, is 3, 9 or 6, 12. Also, I'm looking for a Rahu that's connected with Sagittarius or Pisces. Okay, it could be Ketu in, in those places as well. Uh, so that is strong. We've also got, you know, I'm looking at where is Jupiter placed in terms of house, in terms of sign, in terms of nakshatra? Is it conjunct anything, aspects? Yeah, house position is very important to me. I always like to look at that. Uh, but there's lots of things I use to assess. But don't worry, if you're not an astrologer, there are other ways you can assess if uh, Jupiter is too strong or too weak. And that's just by your life. Okay, You can reverse engineer this from the qualities of your life. So if Jupiter is too strong, what does that look like in your life? I'll give you some examples. The first one is that you might have over the top ambition. You might be hugely ambitious to save humanity, okay? Or, you know, your goals in life might be absolutely massive. And you kind of know that you can't share your goals with people at parties kind of thing, right? If there's this attorney in there, they might raise an eyebrow and go, I don't think they're going to achieve that, right? You know, it's, it's that kind of thing. But we all need to have a big dream on the horizon. Uh, so this is about getting the level of this right for you, okay? How big should you make your dream? You know, maybe you need to rein it back in, all that kind of thing, right? So we're going to look at all that. There's also, if Jupiter is far too strong, is the possibility of fantasy thinking. So as I say, this is where a person just, they get into the realm of fantasy and time drains away and is lost and they haven't made progress on any of these dreams of theirs. I'll give you an example of someone I know. This is a friend of mine who's got Rahu Jupiter conjunct in Sagittarius in the 10th house, which makes him a Pisces ascendant. Okay, now this person has very lofty ideas for what they want to achieve. That, oh, I want to do this job. Oh, then I want to do that. Then I'm going to do this. And like, they're all these big lofty goals. But this person has not made any progress or steps or, you know, and, and a couple of decades has gone by and they're not doing any of those things that they've been talking about the whole life. That can happen, okay? So that's Jupiter is far too strong in that person's life. Um, another example of Jupiter being too strong, what's a symptom of that? That can be a very messy or disordered place. I've seen this, I've been to the homes of uh, some strong Jupiterians that I know and their place would be very messy, very disordered, disorganized. A um, bit of chaos, a bit of things all over the place. That can sometimes be due to Mars as well. I don't want to just blame Jupiter for that, but it could be. could be one of the symptoms there, okay? Now, what if Jupiter is weak? How does that manifest in a person's life? What does that look like? <clears throat> well, one of the things I see here, and I'll give you an example of um, a chart where this is so Jupiter in Capricorn. Again, this is someone I know who I'm thinking of who has Jupiter in Capricorn. But again, I would also look at the position of Saturn. Uh, there's lots of things I look at, so it's, it's not just one thing. So if you've got Jupiter in Capricorn and you don't relate to it, what I'm about to say here, then you know maybe you've got a sensational Mercury that's really making up for Jupiter, okay? so. There, there are lots of things to factor in here. But one of the things with a, a weak Jupiter is you might not know how to get excited about life. You might not feel very excited about life. You might not feel very enthusiastic. Okay, that is, the word enthusiasm, I think is really key when it comes to Jupiter. Jupiter's passionate. Jupiter, when Jupiter's alive and great, 
you know, we're seeking the truth. We're looking to go beyond. We're looking to expand, you know, and we're passionate. And because when Jupiter is very strong, the lion will be active. So Mercury will be too. I always find that Jupiterians are really funny people, really fun loving people. So I've got the next one is you don't know how to experience fun or joy. Yeah, you might be like really serious, right? Um, the other thing that could happen with a weak Jupiter is you might find that your vision is very confined or very narrow. So what do I mean by this? I think it, I'm trying to say here that like your goal is too small actually uh, for life or what it is that you want to do or what it is you want to experience. Your life may be quite narrow and confined. You might not your dream might not be big enough is what I'm saying there. And I think with Jupiter, this is about dreams. This is about, and this is Pisces, right? So in this episode, it is very much going to be about adjusting the level of your dream and getting that right. So let's take a look at some of these top tips. All right, top tip number one is curb your enthusiasm. Now this tip could be sponsored by Larry David. Do you know, out of interest, just before recording this episode, I thought, let me take a look at Larry David. Let's see what's going on there. And I'm very pleased to report he has a Sagittarius moon. So this tip is brought to you by a Sagittarian. And I've got the, I love this phrase, curb your enthusiasm. He's saying, rein it in a little bit, right? Not too much. You don't want to take the joy out of life okay we do need to have a big goal a big unattainable goal you know what do they say start a large foolish project or something I should look up that quote if I find some information I'll put it by my side but we do need to have some kind of dream on the horizon it does make life exciting and interesting and gives us something to move towards it, it gets us motivated it gets us going so I do love that about, you know, a Sagittarian or a Piscean. I've got these incredibly big goals, but what ha can happen is if your goal is too big, you might start to feel the pressure of that goal. And the longer you keep doing nothing about it, the more pressure that will build within you. And that can be really uncomfortable, right? And I think it's really important. Just, just reduce the goal a little bit. You don't have to reduce it so that it becomes boring and something you don't want to do. No, keep the dream, but just learn where to rein it back in so it's more comfortable. Now, a remedy as part of this top tip number one, a remedy to curb your enthusiasm is actually to engage Saturn. So you will want to look at things like discipline. You will want to become disciplined. You will want to get a diary. You will want to write to-do lists, um, cross off tasks. Okay, so what is that in your case as a Jupiterian? That is you becoming a little bit mercurial as well as Saturnian. Okay, these, these both will help. But the mercurial thing is coming in here because that is connected with Jupiter. Okay, and the quote that I have here, which Confucius said, which really helps in this instance, he says that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Okay, so you've got the thousand mile dream. You might want to curb your enthusiasm, maybe make it 900 miles if that you know, improves things a little bit for you. I don't know. But um, so there's that that you can do. Okay, so you can curb the, the dream a little bit if, if it helps ease the pressure. Um, but start that single step and it will be mercurial in nature. It will, be, it will require a bit of Saturn as well just to get disciplined to actually do it. Possibly a bit of Mars, I don't know, but let's, let's stick with Mercury here. Mercury, because it's a single step. So you will need to fill in the tax form. You will need to design the logo. You will need to put the website up. Okay, you are gonna need to do those things. So that is my top tip, number one. Let's take a look at the next one. Top tip two is study new things. I really like this one. I spent my whole Jupiter Mahadasha studying new things all the time. I was reading so many books. Jupiter Mahadasha for me was this giant period of time where I drank in so many books and my appetite was for self-help books, psychology books, um, spiritual books. I just used to 
down the one after the other. I really enjoyed that. My Rahu Mahadasha reading was quite different. It was biographies and of all kinds of weird people. I, you know, I just didn't um, care who it was. I just had to read about people. But Jupiter came along and it was all about spirituality, self-help. But one of the things I discovered during that time is that there is a book for everything. So if you are experiencing any kind of problem in life, engage Jupiter, okay? So this means find a book, find a coach, find a guru, find an expert, find an audio, find a video, um, you know, find a website, find a blog, find a vlogger. There is so much information and a lot of it's free, okay? so. Use all these resources and know that here's another thing that people often quote as well, that there are no new thoughts and whatever problem you're encountering, it's been encountered and someone has figured it out. There is a solution out there. Okay, so don't be fooled by thinking, oh, you know, my problem is so unique. No one's ever had my problem before. That's the ego talking and that's an ego trap. You want to get out of that trap. You want to get Jupiterian. You want to recognize that there is information about whatever thing you are in and there's someone giving excellent guidance, excellent wisdom to help you get out of it. The other thing I've got as part of this top tip is that you should cross train. Okay, so now the example I have here of cross training, I don't know where this came from, but this is somehow in my head. I've got here footballers do ballet to train different muscles and learn balance. Okay, so that, I don't know where it comes from, but it's written in my notes. This is really cool. And this is the kind of thing I did in my Jupiter Mahadasha as well, because I read lots of different spiritual things, but as part of my work, you know, I um, was also reading and writing lots of different things, but that all come in handy. It's quite incredible. So when I was working in advertising, I used to, I've even written for truck companies, you know, so what do I need to know? How, how is it that I know a lot about trucks? It's kind of weird, but you know, it, it's good to cross train. Okay. It's good to learn lots of different things from lots of different disciplines. I'll give you an example of how I'm doing that now in my Saturn Mahadasha as an astrologer. How am I cross training now? Well, I do tarot and tarot is brilliant because it, it, it helps me with astrology. It helps me to build my intuitive muscles. It's really fantastic. And it helps me do that in a way that I, I am doing the same thing in astrology too, but it, it's slightly different, you know? So find areas that you can cross train in and study new things. All right, let's take a look at tip number three. Top tip number three is spend money, okay? If you wanna get the flow going in your life, you have to expand, right? Jupiter is all about expansion. So make the first move and spend money, spend energy, put something out there, give something of yourself, okay? This doesn't have to be spend money as such, right? This, this can just be energetic. This can just be, well, I'm gonna start an Instagram post or I'm gonna start, feed or whatever. I'm going to start a YouTube channel, whatever it is, right? And it could just be for practice. It doesn't have to be for real. Um, one of the things I did before starting this channel was I created a practice channel. And I think that went okay. I kind of got 200 odd subscribers. Um, but then I can't remember. I just decided to shut it down. And then, well, then I kind of knew, okay, I think I can do this. And then I started this one and I kept this one going. But I've got here, spend money, yeah. And it, you know, I've got the note, how do you make big money? How do you get the flow going? Will you spend? I, I've read that in so many places, all those abundance courses and lectures and all that kind of thing. Um, I've got here, make some form of structure. So structure, you might want to engage Saturn for that. Jupiter and Saturn work beautifully together. They are the two materializers. They're the two best materializers to make the big stuff. So make some sort of structure that enables you to give your energy to the world. Okay, that's a very Jupiterian thing to do. Jupiter is natural at accumulating energy. So be sure to release energy as well. Okay, you don't want to just accumulate, 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 and that's it. No, you, you have to, the flow has to happen. So give something out. I've got the note here. It's like injecting fuel into your life or injecting fuel into your business or whatever it is that you want to get going. 
Top tip number four. I really like this one. Expand your horizon. I do this all the time. I, and you, you've seen me, if you're part of my pick a card audience, you know that I do this. Just checking the time, we're okay. Every now and then, I just have to go outdoors. I just have to take all my tarot cards and I have to do my work outside. I don't know why this is, but I think it's to do with this top tip. So I've got the note here, are you in a room all day? Go outside. Are you, have you been stuck in a city for many months? Visit a new city. Have you been stuck in a country for too many years? Visit a new country, okay? This is all about look at your environment, look at where you are, and just kind of shake things up a bit. Go outside, try something new. And especially this one about if you've been in a room all day, go outside, it's really, really important. I think part of this top tip is that your aura will actually physically expand as well in the outdoors and it can touch different things. So this is also to do with your aura as well. Uh, another part of this top tip I've written here, look at your world clock and see what time it is in another city. I do this now and then, and my location of choice was always Singapore. When I was in London or you know, when I've been here, I'll always think about what's going on in Singapore? Because it's on the equator, and it's always been really interesting. Every time I've flown there, there's always hot weather. And you know, with London, I'm always coming out of somewhere really cold. Australia sometimes, eh, sometimes it's warm. But I like to just think about what's happening in the now, right now. Okay, so it's dark here in Sydney, but it's probably afternoon there in Singapore, you know, and, and people are doing different things. And I don't know, I like to do this as a thing now and then just think about what life is like for other people in the here and now, right now, you know, and how different that is to where I am. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of weird, but that just helps me connect in with the now a bit better. I like to do that. And I think it's a way of valuing where I am. That's definitely what I get out of that activity. I kind of value where I am and just the excitement of the world, just the fact that the world is switched on. There is so much going on out there, you know, and my little world is not, it's not so little. There's, there's a lot more out there. I always like to remind myself of that because sometimes we can get stuck in our tiny, petty little problems. I know I have. But a way of me breaking free of that is just thinking, do you know what? There are people having fun out there, you know, and that kind of just breaks me out of, you know, whatever I'm going through in my here and now. And top tip number five, okay, this one is very Jupiterian. I don't know if this title will make it because there are too many words here. I don't know what I'm going to put on the screen, but I've got written here, let go through higher wisdom. This is a big one. So... This is classic Jupiterian thinking. This is Jupiter at its best. It's so important that we reach for higher thoughts. We reach for higher thinking. We, we reach for higher wisdom. So let's say I'm feeling enormously depressed about the state of the world. And I go down a couple of rabbit holes and I tell you as a Jupiterian, you are very experienced at doing that. that. That should probably be one of my top tips. Oh, I knew I'd have more. Look at that. Rabbit holes. Yeah. Some of you need to curb your going down rabbit holes. Okay. Uh, but that, that is a good top tip. I might put some of these and pin them in the comments below. How are we doing on time? We're okay. Okay, let's say I'm really depressed about the state of the world. I've gone down some rabbit holes and I'm just thinking, oh, this is just all, this is bad. If I know that we're in Kali Yuga and that Kali Yuga is an evolutionary process that takes hundreds of, if not thousands, you know, really long time, takes a long time to evolve, then I'm going to let go of my need. If I have that thinking around Kali Yuga, if I know that there's a massive evolutionary process at play, having that thought, which is Jupiterian wisdom, that really helps me let go of my current thoughts about the state of the world now. It works for me. I know that for sure because I've definitely been reaching for higher wisdom since my teenage years, I used to read Bhagavad Gita, I used to read Tao Te Ching, I used to, you know, I consumed all these books, I love them. 
Sun Tzu, Art of War, all of this. And a lot of these books are just getting you to shift your perspective. And they're giving you higher thoughts, bigger thoughts. You know, they're, they're getting you to recognize some perspective on your life, that your life is actually just tiny in comparison to, you know, the big scales of evolution that we're going through, right? Jupiterian wisdom is so fantastic that oh, I just, it's the best thing ever. And I'm so happy I've gone through my Jupiter Mahadasha. And I've learned so many of these things. I've got written here, believing in reincarnation can help you make peace with what you can realistically achieve in this life and what you are working towards in future lives. Okay, so that's important. Now, this is not to negate the now. This is not to diminish a dream and say, oh, it's not, don't, don't even bother because, you know, you're probably not going to achieve it in this life. And no, 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 it's not that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. What we're doing is through these concepts of things like Kali Yuga, and knowing that evolutionary processes take hundreds of years and knowing that this is one incarnation of mine and I, I'm, this motivates me, this works for me, this, because I think to myself, well, if I don't achieve that much in this lifetime, it doesn't matter because I'll enjoy it in the future lives. For me, it really works. It doesn't make me think, oh, so there's no point, so I won't do anything. No, no, I, I find that Jupiterian wisdom helps me to let go of my petty problems in the now. It really does. So guys, and look, if I, we've just come up with another possible top tip number six, but don't tell anyone else. I did have a bonus tip in Saturn, but that was the baker's dozen, okay? So I had to do it there. But here, if I was to go for a top tip number six, I would say, um, yes, go down your rabbit holes, but don't spend too much time there. Come back to reality and keep building your life. Okay, do the mercurial things, fill in the tax form, launch the website, you know, get it done. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy uh, enjoyed this episode today on Jupiter and my top five tips. Next up in the series, we're going to have Mars. I'm really excited to do that one. So stay tuned and I look forward to seeing you next time.